Good day, everybody. My name is Yola Oshevika. I am a covenant international school. I am a primary four. I am here to talk about the elephant. The elephant is a very large gray animal with four legs, two trunks, long curved teeth, and a trunk. Long nose that can use to pick things up. Elephants are mammals, that is, they feed their young ones with meat from their body. Elephants can be found in the continent of Africa and Asia. Elephants can reach up to height four meters. Great 7,000 km kg. Elephants have features but other animals do not have. They have long trunks, which can serve as weapons, particularly breathing, lifting water, and holding objects. That is, grow into strength. They can serve as weapons by, by tools and for making and digging. Elephants here flap to control their body temperature. Their pillar like carry, their pillar like leg carries their great sweet. Elephants are an are people as artists. They, they eat plants. They can, be, they can be found in the savannah, forest, or desert. They prefer to stay near water. Elephants, are, elephants, can, reach up, elephants can live up to 70 years in the desert. They communicate by touch, scent, smell, and sound. Elephants are recognizable features because of flock, church, literature, and religion, and other popular culture. Thank you. Happy to see you once again. So you are most welcome to today's story time with Mrs. G. Yay! Now I like that excitement. I love that excitement. Now to our viewers out there, welcome to today's story time with Mrs. G. Today promises to be an interesting one because I have a very interesting story as usual for you again. And I hope you enjoyed our last episode. Did you enjoy the last episode, children? Yes! All right, so today we're gonna to be telling a story titled, The Magic Paint Brush. Everyone say it, The Magic, Magic Paint Brush. Brush. You've seen the brush before, right? Yes. Now in today's story, you're gonna be learning about a magic paint brush that did lots of goody goodies for people in the community where it was found. So my story begins. I want you all to listen attentively, okay? All right. Once upon a time in a very far away land, far, far, far back to the hills, there lived a very poor boy called Maliang. Everyone say Maliang. Maliang. Maliang came from a very poor family. It means he didn't have so much money to cater for his needs. Yes, he was so poor, he couldn't fend for his meals, his three square meals per day, he couldn't pay his school fees, but there was something special about Maliang. Maliang had a very good skill, and that was drawing. Maliang could draw beautifully, he could draw creatively. How many of you know how to draw? Now that's beautiful. Maliang's case was very, very good because he was exceptional. Now, one night while he was asleep, an old man appeared to him in the dream. Boom! And the old man looked at him and said, Dear Maliang, I have something very good to give to you today. And Maliang was like, Okay, I, what do you want to give to me? Remember, he was dreaming. And then the old man brought out a very big paintbrush. He gave the paintbrush to Maliang and he said, I am giving you this paintbrush because you are very good at painting. And I want you to use this paintbrush to help the people in your community. Help everyone you see. And boom! Ah, Ali woke up. It was a dream. Ah, he turned around. And guess what? Marlian saw a big paintbrush on his bed next to him yeah can you imagine that that you were just sleeping you had a dream and then you just woke up and you found what you just were you, you were dreaming on the bed that was what happened to Malian. it was a dream but he found the same paintbrush the old man gave to him right on his bed can i hear you say that better bed. fantastic and so Malian woke up got dressed and he set off straight to the community. While Malian was on his way going, he remember what the old man said to him. The old man said, 
always help people with the paintbrush I have given to you. So Malian decided to do something. He knew that in his community, there had been famine for a long time. No water, no food, and so people were suffering. Do you know the first thing Malian did? Malian immediately took the paintbrush and painted a very big river. Now, when he painted a very big river, guess what? The river came into reality. Yes, the river came into reality. And so there was a very big river in that village. And everybody was happy, happy. People rushed down to the river. Some fetched water baited. Some used water from the river to water the plants they planted. And so they had food to eat. Everybody was just saying, Malang, Malang. Everybody was just singing, Malang, Malang, Malang. Yeah, they were so excited. They've seen the Savior. Malang was happy. He didn't stop there. While he was going home, Malian saw some group of farmers who had been farming for the past donkey years and yet they had nothing to eat. Huh? He thought about something. I have my paintbrush next to me. And do you know what he did? Malian drew a setting that had lots of foods. Okay, let's look at some of the foods we have in our communities. Uh, maybe if you're in Yoruba, he drew a way to soup, right? And for those in Calabar, he do any kind of soup. And for people maybe going to America, he prepared salad. So he do lots of beautiful, interesting, tasty, palatable food for people. After drawing all of these things, do you know what? The food, boom, came to reality. Remember, it's a magic paintbrush. Whatever he draws will come into reality. So after drawing all of this, everybody in the village had enough to eat. Come and see people, they were racing. Where's Malian? Where's Malian? Ha! Ah, people will go collect food. They will eat. And everybody started singing the praises of who? Malian, Malian, Malian. Malian was just raining all over the community. Guess what? Hmm. While this was happening, the king of the village became angry. Can I see your angry faces? Ah. He became angry with that small boy. Feed in this community. I am going to deal with him. The king boasted. And he sent his men. Doom, doom, doom. Go get me the boy called Malian. And he got Malian arrested and brought to the king's palace. Ha! Ah! Malian was scared. The king said, Can I have your paintbrush? Malian gave him the paintbrush. Do you know what the king did? The king tried all he could to draw lots of scenes and make them come into reality. But nay, none came into reality. And then he said, I'm going to deal with you, Malian. Capture this boy and let's go. And they took Malian to a faraway land. The king and his guards. When he got to that place, the king told Malian, I am going to set you free if you're able to draw a hill covered with gold. Can you imagine that? You know when you have gold, you have money. Do you know that? Yes. yes. All right. So Malian told the king, I will not. The king said, I'm going to kill you if you don't do that. So Malian thought of a plan. Do you know what Malian did? <laughs> Malian drew a hill covered with gold, but he now drew a river that pushed the hilly gold mountain far away from the king and this made the king to be furious i will deal with you i will deal with you and he said if you don't draw something that will bring back the gold to me i'm going to deal with you malian said okay not to worry not to worry i'm going to draw a ship that would sail you down to the gold mine and the king laughed <laughs> can i hear you laugh like a king <laughs> and he was very happy. He was very happy. And Malian drew, boom, a very big ship appeared and came into reality. And Malian drew to the point where the ship was sailing with the king to the gold mine. But something dropped on Malian's mind. A thought. Everyone say a thought. A thought. He thought about something. He was very intelligent. Mm, because you'll be wicked to all the people in this community. I'm going to draw where there's a storm, and the storm is going to kill you right there. And then Malian drew a sea that had a storm, a tempest that was very windy, and it was shaking. Of course, when there is tempest, what's going to happen? Your ship would work capsized. 
So Malian immediately drew that when the king was at the middle of the sea, going to take his what? He was going to take his gold. So Malian drew when the tempest arose and the king couldn't survive it. Malian now drew where the boat or the ship capsided and immediately the wicked king and his guards capsided and they all perished. Guess what? Everyone in the community became very, very happy. And so they called for a celebration and the jubilation was ongoing around the whole city in Malian's village. Everyone ended up living in peace because the wicked king was nowhere to be found. And everybody in the village lived happily ever after. And did Malian stop drawing things into reality? The answer is what? No. Malian kept on using his magic paintbrush to draw good things into reality. With this, dear children, I have come to the end of my story. Don't forget the title is a magic paintbrush. One lesson before we leave. What did you learn from today's lesson? Yes, girl. We should not be wicked. In today's story, who was wicked? The king. the king was the wicked one. One more lesson again, and then we're gonna to call today. Um, we're gonna to call today to an end. Yes, what did you learn? It's always good to help people. Who was the person that helped people in the story? We've listened to. Malia. So Malia was a very helpful child. All right, children. And so our viewers out there, do not be bad to people. Always help people. And don't be like the wicked king. king. Okay. So we hope to see you in our next episode. We have come to the end of today's episode on the story about the magic paint brush. Now, let's children, we're going to turn and say bye-bye to our friends. Bye-bye. Hello, children. Welcome to today's episode on Creative Minds and welcome to the segment where we will be learning how to make different tasty, delicious and nutritious food. So today we will be learning how to make a basic coleslaw. And remember on our last episode we learned how to make a plum milkshake. That is using plum, watermelon, milk and our ice cube, blending them together. And remember I said you shake, you blend, you shake, you blend. So today, we'll be learning how to make a, <coughs> a basic coleslaw. So in making this, we'll be needing our carrots, our cucumber, our cabbage, and mayonnaise. So the first thing to do when dealing with vegetables, you wash them thoroughly, you rinse them. So watch me. So we are going on to dicing our carrots. So we'll be dicing it. Then remember children, you make sure you do this with an adult supervision because remember, chop objects are risky. So we are dicing our carrots, we make circles first, the round shape. So now we can still see some black spots on the cabbage. We just use our knife to slice those 
part up. We slice them away. We slice them out and they are good to go. Then we are slicing them out. So the last veg vegetable ingredient we are making use of is our cucumber. So I'm going to take a bit slice of it and I am peeling the back off. It gives us an extra juicy taste of it. Some people slice it with the back on it but I prefer to shred it away because it gives us a juicy taste of the cucumber. This is also edible, so it can also be eaten. It's not a waste, or it can also be blended as a smoothie or a milkshake. So I'm cutting the head away. So I'm going to make tiny cubes. So the cucumber is looking beautiful. That's how I love it. It helps the green. So I'm making tiny cubes. Like I said earlier, some people love them shredded. They are cabbage, they are carrot shredded, and they are cu cucumber sliced with the back. But I prefer mine to be chopped, diced, so that I can have a chewy bite of it. So now we are going to mix it with our mayonnaise. This is the most interesting part. So now I'm going to turn, pour it into a bowl. I'm going to pour it into a bowl. So now it's time to add our cream. You can make use of mayonnaise or salad cream by mixing your coleslaw. And every child, and every child I have come across always love their coleslaw cream. So which means we are going to add extra cream to it. So you can get this at any supermarket, any store. It's opened. So we are going to make it extra creamy. Lots and lots of cream. Lots and lots of cream. Then we mix. Then while mixing, we are picking from the bottom to the top. Then we mix. Bottom to the top. Then we mix. Bottom to the top. Then we mix. Then why is coleslaw, this basic coleslaw, so healthy and important as in our diet as children? It's because it aids digestion, it, uh, it avoids constipation, it de detoxifies our body, which means we c there is no time where we would say we are purging, we are having stomach ache, or we will buy eating, and this will also fill us up. Taking this as breakfast is going to keep you on your toe. You are going to be so healthy. And our parents can also have this as, and it can be eaten as a side dish. So our coleslaw is ready. It's yummy, it's looking creamy. It's looking wonderful. So this is it. Thank you for watching us. Make sure to join us our next, on our next episode. Bye.
Hi, beautiful children. This is Miss Flash again. I hope you remember. Yes, last week we talked about the first three branches of poise, and I am sure you took notes, right? Because we're going right into the next three. But before then, let's do a quick recap. So I told you the first pillar of character is trustworthiness and that's the one that has the color of the sky what color is that that's definitely blue and then you've got to mean what you say and say what you mean no exaggerations don't say things and later say i was just joking no that if you do that then you won't be called trustworthy we talked about respect and i told you respect is the color of the golden sun whenever you see the sun that's just a reminder that you have to be respectful we talked about respecting three different categories. The first one is you have to respect yourself. Have you been respecting yourself? We talked about respecting your things. Handle your items with care. Handle your items as if they cost a whole lot because they actually do. And then we talked about respecting places. You don't just stand up in the church. You don't stand up in the class and just shout. So if you have something to say, you probably would have to do a lot of excuse me, excuse me, and excuse me. The third one we talked about last week was fairness. That's when you learn to play by the rules and you are able to manage your emotions even when you don't seem to be winning. So if it's a chess game, a game of Scrabble, you must stay patient till the end. That's why you notice even during a football match when a particular team is winning and another team is losing, the team losing would not say, oh, this is the 56th minute. We don't want to play anymore everybody will just have to stay put till the game is over so I hope I want you to learn to manage yourself even when it's not working in your favor so let's go right into the next three for today I love number four number four is the color of the grass the green grass that's the pillar that reminds you that you have to be responsible. That's the character pillar that everybody must pursue because there are only two kinds of people in life, those who are responsible and those who are not. There's no middle point. You're either responsible or you're not. You're either ready to clean up after yourself or you remain dirty. And being responsible is such an important character because you don't have to wait until you're an adult before you're responsible. You've got to be responsible for every item handed over to you so you've got to be, if you're an older sibling you must be responsible for your younger sibling if your mommy asks you to do a number of chores when she's going out you've got to be responsible so that you don't wake up tomorrow and say oh I need help when you could have helped yourself being responsible is a very important tool that you must not discard or carefully let's slip away so let's go into the second one for today after responsibility we've got caring everybody must show that they care you've got to show that you care for people around you you've got to show that you care for your parents and this is a very sensitive one because sometimes you say daddy I want new shoes daddy I want you to buy burger daddy I want you to buy this for me daddy I want a new pair of sneakers daddy I want a new bag I, my daughter will always say mommy I want baby alive and sometimes I tell her it's not a, the right time for that or sometimes I say I can't afford it and my daughter doesn't go mm, why would you not give it to me you've got to show understanding the best way to show that you are caring is when you show understanding how do you show understanding you don't pick offense how do you show understanding you take to correction next time your parents correct you don't sit somewhere in a grumpy way and start to complain and say mommy you corrected me in front of the neighbors mommy you corrected me you were snapping at me you were shouting you've got to say thank you every time you're corrected say thank you when you say thank you it shows you are going to take to it but when you grumble or you sit somewhere in a grumpy way or you sit somewhere complaining then you are not going to take to it and you won't be better for it so it's really really good to show that you are caring another way to show your caring is whenever you get into the room and you see mommy doing this her head is in her hand or you see daddy just dump his bag that's not the right time to say daddy i need biscuit that's the time to just settle 
watch them and give them some space. You know, our parents need us to care for them too. Yes, they are parents and they take care of our responsibilities, but they need us to show that we care. The last pillar for today, and actually the last pillar, is citizenship. And that's the royalty pillar. That's the pillar with the color purple. Did I tell you the color for the pillar carrying? It is actually red. That's the one with a big heart, a large heart. Whenever you remember that your heart beats, you've got to remember that you should be caring. So let's talk about the royalty pillar, the pillar that shows that we are royalty. Remember, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are royalty already. And what does that mean? You've got to carry yourself with dignity. You've got to carry yourself with style. You've got to remember that you're not like every other person. No. Yes, you are Nigerian, or you might be British, or from any part of the world, but you are royalty. Never let that slip out of your mind. When you are in the car, no royalty would just thrash a nylon through the window no royalty will try to use his fist to settle any issues that that has caused him or her pain royalties take their time they are very expressive I know you want to know what we'll be having in the next class thank you so much for listening I can't wait to see you in the next class bye